Afternoon, everybody. Um, just about to get started. Um, see people entering the room. Um, just let me know. Somebody can they put a, a yes in the Q and A section to see if they can hear me okay? That would be much appreciated. Thank you, Mark. Loads of yeses. <laughs> okay. Um, just for your information, Alex, um, Speedos yesterday, I'm lying on the sunbed looking up to the sky now on the same beach. So I thought I'd change the view a little bit for you. Okay. Hope everybody's um, having a safe time. Looking forward to the session today. wait a little bit longer and then we'll just get started in a minute. Okay. So we're going to have a poll today as well. There's going to be some questions coming through. Um, so it'll be just very quick, click the buttons just to give some feedback. Um, whilst we're going through the, the work, so um, if you care to share your feedback, that would be really much appreciated. Just check loud and clear. Is that coconuts I can see? In the trees, I've got no idea, Alex. <laughs> um, okay, so what I'm going to do is just go through this uh, quick intro. I'll just be fast on the PowerPoint and um, get straight into the modeling. So welcome to session two. Um, I trust everybody is doing well today. Um, let me just share my screen with you. Um, please continue to stay safe and also continue playing with SketchUp, similar to the tone of yesterday, which is good. Um, Again, welcome and uh, thanks to Elmtech and SketchUp for uh, supporting this event. And we will try to do a Q and A in session three only. I know I had a lot of questions yesterday, which was really good. I cannot stop the questions, but I'll do my best to answer them at the end. Okay, uh, I got some really nice emails yesterday. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad that uh, the information I passed yesterday was of some help. And as again, I'll repeat that we do intend to do more webinars, uh, layout in depth, more extension uh, seminars and rendering. And if there's anybody new joined today that couldn't make it yesterday, um, Trimble have release the SketchUp, the new 2020.1 maintenance release. Um, if you go to CA3D's website, you will see in the blog, gives you information about it. Um, you know, have a read there, some really nice techniques and, and new tools there. And um, this session, we're going to be looking at adding additional fixtures and fittings. Um, a photo match and just doing some art paintings to put on the wall and um, just really to start, start to sort of finish off the model. Um, see how we got on with that. And then uh, tomorrow, um, if there's anything I need to finish off, I'll do that straight away. Um, shouldn't be much. And then we'll look at the purple extensions in a bit more depth and um, be ready to present the model if you're going to um, you know, put it into layout. Um, and even maybe export out to CAD. 
And I can't emphasize enough about the sustainability of your SketchUp models. So whether you're an interior designer, garden designer, any type of designer using SketchUp, try and work with a logical system. It really makes a difference. And I'm going to repeat again, you know, the Fab Four, fantastic four to use all the time. Uh, the beauty with 2020.1 is the fact that you've now got visibility options in the outliner. So you could have your layers on here, um, but you could have the visibility of the component off in the outliner. It's very powerful. I'm just going to show you that in a second. Our fantastic four. The Extension Warehouse. Um, if any of you don't know about it, it is a fantastic um, built-in avenue to access a lot of free extensions. Uh, some of them are uh, charged extension, chargeable extensions, but um, this is a fantastic um, resource within SketchUp. And uh, we've added in a few already. We've worked with some. You maybe use some, but the poll that we're going to be sending out soon is going to ask a few questions about that. Um, some extensions to remember. Um, yesterday we looked at Cleanup and Shell uh, with TomTom. Um, Flex Tools, start from the top, James. 2dpeople.com, a very nice add on uh, for um, adding entourage people and uh, changing the style of them. Um, I can talk about that later. Uh, Flex Tools, the guys at Flex Tools are happy that they want to do a webinar with us specifically on their tool set. So when that happens, we'll be making that announcement worth a look. I'm going to be using some of them today. Um, and then also want to try and get the Dale Martins from Mindsight Studios to go through some of his extensions as well. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll do it in batches because there's so many of them. Um, but it'd be good to hear if any of you have got some extensions that you really like and you're using already, you know, just drop us a line and let me know how you're getting on with them. Um, what we will be doing is we'll be going into photo matching as well. Um, the 3D Warehouse is where I've uploaded some of my models that I find very handy, like sort of sockets, switches, lights. Um, and what I did before this um, preparation of this webinar, which I'm going to do today, is I'm going to do a photo match model of that microwave. Okay, you can go to the 3D Warehouse and download the microwave. Not too sure if you'll find any food in there, but um, it's worth a try. I'll have a look anyway. And then we'll be looking at texture tweaking, where I'm going to make some lovely artwork. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into SketchUp. Is anybody, let me just see the list, everybody's okay. Yep, I'll come back to the questions later on, okay, guys and girls? And uh, what I'm going to do is just jump straight in and focus on the model and start to finish off from where I, I, I you know, start from where I finished off yesterday. Okay. Okay, so we looked at this, we got to this point yesterday where we we done so much work on, on the model. Um, what I want to do is um, I'm going to go over here. I added this window in yesterday. I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to do the same with this one here. I'm just going to uh, pull this wall and just delete it. This, this building will have windows, trust me. Um, get rid of that one. And on the side here, we have a, a door and louver, um, you know, side entrance into the, the upper level. So I'm going to tape off the side here, and we have 2375. Okay, I'm just going to press H. And that just shows me just the external wall. I'm just going to draw a line across here at the top and pull this right down here. Okay, and then I'll just press H again. So I'm going to right click out and close. Uh, what I want to do then is um, 
I would say that the thing we want to look at is the stairs. I'd like to get this stair in down here and then, you know, work outside. So I'm going to go over, zoom into this stairwell, and I'm going to go to the flex tools. Okay, the flex tools are like parametric um, objects where you can drop in doors, windows, stairs, ramps, and stretch them about. Uh, they're fully customizable. Um, I'm going to click on the stair, put it in here. And if I just orbit around here, I can scale it, which is fairly normal that you can do with a component in this direction in particular. But what we have is the depth from the, the upper floor level down to the lower floor level. And we want to add in some data to, to change that. So we click on the component options and I want to look at a fixed height here. Fixed height here is going to be 2921. Okay, so I'm going to enter that. And I'll just press apply. And you see the stair appears, drops down there. Okay, so a couple more entries I need to put in there is I want the tread and the rise. Maximum riser height, we want to go for 160. The fixed tread, we're going to have 215. I don't want a thickness on the tread, so that's going to be zero. And the nosings will be zero. I'm going to press apply. Okay, you can see that the stair has actually changed now. It's got a slightly steeper pitch. And we want to remove the top step. We want to turn that on and, and apply. Okay, so we can see now that this step is working. Um, worked it out to clear the way to go downstairs now. Um, it stops short of the steel. Now, all I'm going to do here is just to... I stopped it short so we could work out that we're going to just have a, a small step to come down onto the floor level. So I'm going to go into the floor component below. Um, I'll take a pencil line and draw down in the blue and click and use this edge as reference to draw it parallel. Hold the shift key, go along to the end there, click, and then go up to that point. Just trace this back and press H. Okay, so that gives me my guide for the stair. Now, if I then tape off of here, just go along to that point, that guideline should be in line with the wall below. There you go. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll press H again and I'll draw a line from this point straight down here, pressing H. To find the corner here, I'm going to click on that corner, orbit round, Take it over to here and click. And then you'll see that the difference in the active highlighting shows me that I've successfully formed a separate boundary on that floor. I'm going to press H. And there we have it. So all I'm going to do now is just going to simply just push pull this up. Okay. And um, maybe a little bit of redesign with the concrete around this here, but just for the purposes of the tutorial. Anything is possible, even in the real world, as I'm sure you all know. Okay, I'm just going to edit, delete the guides, click out. Let me just have a look at that. I'm just going to take the more level roof off. again. That's looking good. Okay, so let's click out here. So as I was saying before about the outliner, a really neat feature in 2020.1 um, is that if you see the outliner here, if I click to collapse the, the, the tray here, 
Um, I've got upper level units and I've got a visibility option here. So when I click this, I can turn it off and on. Now the beauty about that is the fact that it's not changing the layer visibility here as well. So if you really start to get used to working with the outliner, it's a very good progression over into better model organization. Okay, so, you know, I can turn off the walls upstairs, the internal wall, purely from the outliner. It's really, really good. Okay, so now that we've got the stair going down inside there, everything's looking good, let's go to the stairs on the outside. So this one over here is just going to be a manual draw this time. I'm going to tape down here. It's 165. I'm going to draw a rectangle over to here and click. Select that. Press C for component. Stair to step. Create. Entity info. Put it on to stair two. And whilst I remember, let's do things right and put this on to let me just click it here, put this on to stair one. There we go. Okay, so if I select this here, I'll go to move. I'm going to go up to the top corner, click, press the control key on the PC and press X9 for nine copies. I'm going to double click inside here now, push pull this over, pressing H to show my reference model. Click. Okay, then let's look at the shape of this step. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to go to the move tool in fact, I'll select this first, go to the Move tool, press the arrow up key, take this up to here, and then I'll push pull this down 150. Okay, so what I can do is I can hide these edges so I, so I don't want to see the gaps. So I'll press H, I'll press Control H, E for Erase, and hold the Shift key down. Okay, so that's hidden that edge there. I'll do the same on the other side. So when I press Control H to bring the rest of the model back, click out. It looks lighter. It's still the front edge to be hidden. So I'll double click inside, E for erase and hold the Shift key, just to give the impression that that's a full solid model, but it, it's not. It's made up of a series of similar um, components, you know, touching each other. So let's go to the pencil now. Click here. Now I'm working on the pencil with a purple grip. The purple grip means I'm drawing on top of a component, or if it was a group, it would be the same thing. Okay, I'm just going to go down to here, click. Touch here, then come down. I will get the, let me just get this here. Parallel to edge inference. Hold the shift key. I'm just going to take this down to here and I'll draw a line down in the blue to that point and then that closes that surface off. I'll push pull this over. 150. I'll make it a component. Triple click it, see for component, stair to stringer. Okay, what I'm going to do is go inside here now and I'm going to tape up off the edge 50. Tape off the edge here to find the midpoint. I'm going to do the same at the top, tape off the edge here, 50 along. Just orbit round and click here to find the midpoint here. So um, I'm going to just copy this line.
just going to move this up 1100. Okay, so thanks to John Ferguson yesterday. He gave me some information on building control heights of handrails um, just so that it's compliant. Um, so thank you there, uh, John. Just move this over to line it up with the center point below. Just going to draw from here up to here, click and just get rid of that point. And then I'm going to go to the move tool, click here, down to there. In fact, we want to take this up to that point higher. So we'll take it up there and click and get rid of that. Okay. So let's go to the profile builder. Okay. So I created a circle earlier in the profile builder um, called H rail for handrail. It's um, diameter 65 millimeters. And what I'm going to do is just select this path and I'm going to click on build along path. And there we go. Okay. Nice and simple. I'm just going to put this on to the stair two, click out, and just make sure this is all tagged on to stair two. Let me just get rid of this here. Just see some of these lines. Yep, need to do this on the other side as well, James. Erase this here. With the shift key to hide it. And there's that stair. Okay, let's go over to this one now. And this one's going to be another flex tool special. Um, when you're modeling stairs by hand, it's great. It's really fast, you know. Um, you can't go wrong with it unless you put your inputs in wrong. But the flex tools are really saving more time. So as you can see the benefits of them here. So the parameters for this stair is we've got a full um, drop from deck to deck of three meters. So the fixed height is 3000. Let's press apply. There we go. We're going to go down again and turn off the tread thickness and the nosing. Apply. We're going to remove the top step, turn that on. Apply. Fantastic how they've created these um, tools. And then we are changing the tread and the, the riser. Tread and the riser, we're going to have this as 160 and 215. And apply. Okay, let me just check here again. The overall needs to be, in fact, mistakenly 152 and 305. That's better. Okay, so it stops on that point. So it's stopping right on there. Um, let's get rid of that and let's widen the stairs. So select it, S for scale, click it here and just take it over to here. Perfect. Okay, so let's just draw our stringer again, starting from here down to here along, just tracing up. I'm just going to extend it through. I come along here, I hold the shift key and I take it right through. Click. Take it along to the end here, up here, along to that point, and then straight down the pitch of the stair. And there we go. Let's push pull this out, 150. Make it a component. Stair, one, 
ringer create. Okay, let's just go in there and change the axis. Entering into the component, change axis, click, move along, click, move over, click, and there we go. Nice and neat bounding boxes around these. And then we'll go in again and just tape up for the 50. Find the midpoint here. Just do a fast window into the corner there. Find the midpoint here and tape back here, 50. Come up here in the blue, 1100. Along here, just going to stop it about there on that point. Click just in, 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 in reference to the corner. Touch the edge here, come up, there's purple. Take it across to there and then draw a line straight up in the blue. It should hit, bang. There we go. Okay, I'm going to select the path again and use this fantastic build along path. So there's our, our handrail. Okay, just make sure that we tag it properly. Put it onto the correct stair, stair one tag. Now, let's do something a bit special. I'm going to go over this tomorrow uh, just to give you an understanding as to how it was built. But the assembly feature in uh, the profile builder is just unbelievable. Um, if I click here, one I created earlier, thinking of the microwave, you know, food cooking. But, <laughs> Um, I'm going to click here. So this whole entire assembly, look at that. Remarkable tool. So if you're dealing with balusters, handrails, I've seen ones online where people are making trees and just drawing in a line and forming all those trees just to, you know, very quickly form um models i mean this is just this is my favorite part of this model believe it or not um take it over and take it back okay we'll even do one in here we don't want to fall down there on a friday night after some wine not that i have wine on a friday night folks um, and then I will, maybe a few bottles, but um, I better edit that. Um, let's go to the floor level. Let me type in here, LL. Look at that, filters it straight down. Floor level roof. Click it. Let me just click out here and then just click this visibility thing, right? Okay, so this isn't coming on right now. I'm just going to go down to there, turn it on, then it comes on there. Okay, the reason why I want this on is I want to draw the similar balustrading on the sun deck. Again, fallen over uh, down the stair. I don't want to fall off the edge here either. So I'm just going to protect everybody that comes for party. Okay, fantastic tool. Uh, if you look at it, it's got the components with the vertical plates and the horizontal fixing plates. But you could add more detail. There's some fantastic um, assembly components that are made there, even like um, electricity towers, Pylons, the whole lot, it's just amazing. I'm going to select those and I'm going to put them onto the upper level balustrade. I'm going to padlock them in case they move. But everything should be padlocked the minute that it's placed in the model. Um, this one here is going to be lower level balustrading and I'm going to lock it. Okay, I'm just going to go to edit, delete the guides. And then I'm going to start to add in some windows. Now, again, back to flex tools, okay? 
Um, I'm clicking on the Flex Fixed Window 1.4. Placing it there. These circular grips are very handy. They, they just get you to find that point straight away. Typical of SketchUp with their, you know, ingenious little tools that they bring in. Just going to scale this over to here. back a bit. Scale this up to here. I'll put a similar one in on the window below. Just make a copy of this down to here. Just going to rotate it around. Just lift it up. So the fact that it's so easy to place these in the position just means that uh, you're spending less time modeling. Just drop this down, click there, hold the shift key, touch the bottom edge, and then we can scale this. Over to here and just check it's up at the top. So that's perfect there as well. We'll have another one in the, the top here. Plenty of windows to see the natural beauty of the landscape on the design. You could, if you wanted to turn the sills off, but I think we'll keep them on. It looks quite um, relevant to the design. And then we'll just place this up here. Okay, so the position of this frame right now, select it. Let's go to the component options. The inset, we want to set that to zero. Apply it. The thickness of the wall is 152. Happy with that. I could do the same with that one. Zero inset, wall thickness, one, five, two. There may be a, a slight way that you can select them all and do them together. Uh, I'm just doing them old school at the moment. Let me just um, zero, one, five, two. Thickness, one, five, two. Sorry, depth 152, yeah. Okay, right. Now for a groundbreaking feature, okay? Now, I've been talking to the Flex Tools guys and um, said to them that there's something in this tool set that's missing. And Yoni at um, Flex Tools had a really, really um, approachable uh, reaction to say he's willing to help just um, you know give him some information as to what I really need so at the moment this hasn't been released to the world yet so I'm, I'm really privileged that uh, the guys at Flex Tools have actually developed this uh, because I think a lot of architectural plans need it a lot of architectural models use it um, so this is the Flex Bifold um, tool now when I bring it in here, it's just, it, you know, the first time I saw this and I tried it out, I just went, wow, okay, and hopefully you're going to do the same. Maybe I've spoiled it for you already. Um, okay, so we have that there, okay? Now, if I take my tool, uh, my cursor, interact with dynamic components, click. Just similar to the dynamic component interact tool in SketchUp, and I click on this glazing, bam. Look at that. I'm hearing the, I'm feeling the ground shaking, folks, right now. Um, I'm going to the component options, and I was digging deep to think, well, can I add more panels on? Can I make them open and close? And you can. Left and right, four to the left four to the right, and a 
quiet. Okay, and then also um, I'm going to change the angle to maybe let's say 30 degrees. Fantastic, look at that. Okay, and if I click it again, it closes the doors. I mean, that is just totally thank you for that. Um, and as I say, this isn't available out there in the world yet. I'm sure it will be there soon, but just so privileged to be able to receive that from these guys to say, look, we've got it. Um, we'll add it in for you for this webinar. So there you go. I'm just going to add another one in here because the first one was so good. Now that saves an acre of time, you know. Um, okay, let's put this as four comma four apply. So you're seeing it for the first time, folks. Um, let's go to the sound. Let's click on this here with the interact tool. Just love that. Really love it. Okay, the final one here is I have a dynamic component that I created uh, with a flex tool louver. Sounds very geekish. Let me just go here and bring this in. So we have in here in the drop down under components, we have got project dynamic components. I prepared these earlier, obviously, um, to save time. Dynamic component, upper level with flex louver. This happens to me all the time. I click it. I'm just going to press drag it and bring it over. Every time I click, it drops it to the axis. Um, I'm going to go to the move tool and rotate this around. And I'm going to place this. These grips that SketchUp have now on the bounding boxes on the corners is really helpful. Before, you know, a lot of people would click on that and it really didn't do anything. It didn't snap. Now they do. So I can click that there and take it over into the corner here. And there you go. So the good thing about this door, folks, is that I've added a two-dimensional door swing on the component. So when I go to the tags... I can turn off the internal door swing upper, off and on for 2D. Um, and also I can go to the interact tool and I can open and close the door. So we can see if that door is going to clear that bifold, which it is, you can show the client that as well. And then also with this louver here, I'm just going to go into here. Um, this is a flex tool component, dynamic component, I'm going to change the 45 degrees to zero and apply. Um, it's got a very funny option here. If I click on this here and apply, it's like Hickory's house. Okay. Um, nice design. Okay. So, We've got all the external openings done now. Um, I'm going to look at the kitchen, start to look at the interior. So normally what you do is you would tape out to put the kitchen units in. I'm just going to do six through five. Um, you would draw a rectangle, you know, just as like a concept model um, shape. I'm just going to send a poll out. Folk, folks, I'm just sending a poll out. There's going to be some questions there, if you can just go through them. There's nothing too crazy on, it's just a multiple choice thing. Um, just launching it now. So just feel free to reply there as I model. I'm just gonna push this up to um, 900 and I'm gonna make a component of this concept unit. KU for kitchen unit. Set the axis. I'm just going to go in here. I'm 
Okay. So we have this um, unit created. Now, obviously, there's been a kitchen unit that's been created by SketchUp themselves. But somebody asked yesterday, why do I use uh, components instead of groups? Um, I just love this reload factor if, uh, feature. Um, if I right click on it, I go to reload. And I can go to my folder where I will have, let me just change this to large icons, go down here. Somebody could be working up a kitchen design, okay? You've got the shape of the kitchen, you give it to a SketchUp designer or a, an interior designer to design the kitchen on its own by itself, and then you can swap it back into the model. And typical, always happens on the let me just go to reload and check this. Um, this is, let me just go to this file here. Yep. It's actually in project domain components. There we go. Okay. What happened there was the first one I brought in, it didn't have the matching axis, so it shifted the model. So it's always good to see that so that you know you have to have the axis position to be um, in the same position for reloading models. Okay, so now this is dropped in. Um, good thing about this as well, folks, is I've got some more dynamics on here. Okay, pretty cool stuff. I'm going to right click out, close. Just put this all onto the interior furniture upper. I'm going to drop in some other things now. I'll just go to the folder that I have um, set up ready to import some interior models. Scrolling down here. Without this is, you know, um, groups to bring in groups. You've got to copy paste them in and and do all these different things. Um, so components all the way. Okay, I'm just going to take the shelving, take it over to there. And then obviously, if I move my mouse over to here, I can go to the bounding box at the back. I can click straight onto that grip and take it straight onto the wall. Okay, and then I can click the grip again that's on the wall. Along in the green, press the left arrow key and put my mouse on the end of the glass there just to line that up. Now, if I orbit around there, you'll see that there's a gap, and that's because there's something in the model there that's um, encroaching beyond the back of the shelf, hence the box is, is further back, this bounding box. So I can just go straight over now and find the endpoint in the plywood shelf. With the move tool, click it, and press the right arrow key and just move it over there and click. So that's in place. Okay, I'm going to bring in the fridge. Ideally, not in that position. Just going to rotate it around. Just going to move this over into place. Let's go down here. We should have some units. Drag this in and drag this in. So all these are coming from, you know, the 3D warehouse. There may be some users that um, have uploaded them that have credits against them. So when you bring them in, they may be named. You know, this model was created by, uh, or created for, and then they have a credit on it. So you see this grip at the back here. If I move my mouse over to this grip here, it turns the model into a transparent x-ray and then I can find this here click and go straight over put it onto the edge of the wall now that is really useful the time it took before to actually position these things was just you know it was tough work especially for a new user just going to go to this one at the back take it over here
it would be good if you could do a double x-ray on another model when you take it down that would be a really cool feature but there we go so uh, we have these nicely sitting in there let's put them on to the um let's go to instead interior furniture upper okay now um, I'm going to drop in the table and chairs. I want to deal with kitchen area, which will involve the photo matching of the microwave oven. Okay, I'm just going to move this over here. One thing just to tell you folks is that if you hold the Alt key on Windows or the Command key on the Mac, you can see that you can toggle the grips. You see that we've got like a midpoint grip on this face. So I can click on that take it along in the green direction and line it up with the cooker here or you know somewhere along there it's just a really useful feature if you go to the midpoint on the top there it is there straight away side center of tables and chairs very good An alternative way to change the tag, more so on uh, Windows than on a Mac, because I'm not too sure if Mac has this resolved yet, but um, to move it over, uh, click on that there. It's the same as tagging it from the, the Entity Info. Okay, I'm going to save the model. So just bear in mind, folks, um, I've still got this space to do. Um, I know that there's some artwork on the wall here. So I'm going to do the, um, the photo match for the microwave, and then I'm going to do the artwork on the wall, and then see how we get on. I um, want to try and get this done for, you know, bang on the hour. It, it will then be left for me to just finish this off, this interior here, fill the space in here, um, and do the bathroom and you know texture it. So we're we're online. We're actually on time. Um, so I'm going to go to start a new file. I'm going to go to file import. Go to match oven. Now this uh, picture here, I've actually, you know, I've got the sizes there, which is useful. New matched photo import. So when it comes in, um, any item, appliance or anything that you can take a photograph in the real world, if you have the angle of that taken properly with your camera or with your uh, photo, with your um, mobile, you can get some really pretty good photo matching from that and it's fast. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've, I've moved the origin of the SketchUp axis to the corner here. I take this here and I just move this up. This red perspective bar here, similarly on the side. So I've got this groove here that I can use. The green bar along the top. The lower green bar along the bottom edge of the glass panel. So when I'm moving this about here, I'm judging it on the blue axis line here. Okay, so that's a pretty good match. Now, it's 287 millimeter tall, this um, microwave. So over here, I'm just going to put this in as 287. Okay, you'll see the grid appears now. The grid is quite dense because of a previous photo match I've been doing. But I'm going to scale this up. Now you'll see the grid increasing in size. I'm going to take this up to here and match this. This represents the first distance from the origin up to that grid of 287 millimeters. Okay. That's getting as close. It's really a judge by eye. Okay, so we'll go for that. Right click done. Okay, I'm ready to draw with the pencil. Click, move up. I'll type in 287 enter. Come down here. Now, it may be slightly off, and I'm going to type in 400. I'm not too worried about this being over at the back here, but I'll come down 
and then fed it back to the origin. And I'll push pull this over here to 485. Again, not worrying that it doesn't match, okay? Right click, project photo. And there's a part of the photo. Not ideal, but we're gonna make it work. Right click, align the view. Right click, texture position. So these pins here, they do different things. Um, getting straight on the ball, I'm gonna right click them and turn them on. Turn off the fixed pins. Click this here over to the corner here. Click this here over to the corner here. And then press drag it back to this edge of the model. Right click done. Okay. On the side here, right click align view. Right click texture position. I could put shortcuts in for that. Drag this over, drag this here. Looks a bit distorted, but you know, we'll get away with that. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to draw on the image just to add a bit of detail. I'll go to X-ray, take this line over to here. Going to pull this out. It might look a bit distorted for now. Let's just let me turn this off. So this this bends here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line about here, over to that point, and I'm going to push pull it over. Okay, and then I'll go to the arc tool. Just do something like that, and just pull that over there. Okay, I'm going to select this. I'm going to go to a plugin which I use a lot called Mirror. Click on it, find the edge down here, go along there, and then come up, wrong direction. Select this. Mirror, go along there, come out, and then up. I'm not getting this today, folks. Select this here. Go along there. And along that way. Way. Take this down to here and pull this through. So I'll soften that and I'll soften that. And I'll just go to um, shaded so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to offset this in and extend those lines through. Soften this here and then just push pull this through here. Then delete this. Okay. Bring on the textures, just add a bit of detail here. Maybe just offset this, scale in a bit, and then resample it. Now we have these buttons here. I'm going to make that a component, B for button. And what I'll do is I will copy this over. X3. Oops. Let me just undo that. Copy this down again. X2, enter. X3, enter. Maybe just slightly off because of the distortion in the picture. It's fine. And then I'll just take those down. And I'll copy them down here. Okay, so what I can do is I can double click in, inside here. I'll just draw an arc. So, you know, we could really go to a high level of detail on.
this model. Um, a lot of people say to me that they have difficulty with photo matching. Let's see the radius on there. Okay. Okay, let me just do this. Let me just pull this out for now. And let me just soften this for now. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll put this as a glass panel on the inside just to stretch it. Maybe stretch it back a bit here. Push pull it in. Sample. Let's just go to the materials and put this in here. I'm just going to paint around here and just darken it down a bit. Okay, and then I'll go to the materials here. Let's see what we've got. Let's go for some metal. Let's do the offset round here. Scale this over, sample that back. Let's arc it. Let's mirror this. There is here, select there and there and mirror that. Let's offset this out. Let's move this out slightly just to give a bit of panel detail. Right, let me do this. Um, I want to weld this first. So selecting all these, what it will do is it will allow me to weld and join all the edges together. Um, in fact, here it's not really doing it. Let me just go to a plugin that I use called Select Curve. This is another great tool. Um, it allows you to just click on one and it will select everything around it just like that. Um, let's go to weld. Now welding joins it all together as you can see so that's exactly what I want now. Nice. Select, 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 and let's make a copy over here and right click, flip along the green direction and just take it over here. Okay, so if I add in, you know, some more material, even if I go to this sampler here, this sample paint, I can click this, okay? Um, what it's going to do is going to sample the color there. So um, I'm going to go to, in the metal here, there's a better metal. If I click on this metal here and I change the scale, something like five, maybe, yeah, let's see how 502 goes, okay? Um, we can sample that and paint. There we go. It's given a kind of effect of metal. Let's just sample that round there. Now we could add rounded corners on this. It's quite a good exercise to, to look at all these things. You know, um, time is tight, um, as it always is. I'm just going to do the, um, the legs down here. I'll just tilt the model. Pull it down, select it, reset the model back to the photo. Not a bad guess. Um, what I'll do is I'll move this over in the green direction just to position it there. And then if I look for the quadrant point, I can reduce it. Let me just offset this out and 
tool is down. Give it a bit of color. Make a component of it. Copy this across, and as I go back to reset it to the model, um, I'm keeping it in the green direction, but I'm eyeballing it to that position. It's probably about there. And then I'll take these two over to the back. Let's put some metal under here and just paint this one. So obviously I paint this one and it puts the color on all the others. So having a look at that, that is not bad in that time. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go back to the main model. I'll save that. Micro. Okay. So I'm going to bring in the, the microwave model and place it. Thank you, folks. Everybody has, um, you know, answered the poll. I really appreciate your feedback there. couple of other things and then I think we will be out of time. Time has just flown today, um, but I'm on track. Um, let's go to project dynamic components. Dynamic microwave. As I said, one I made earlier. Love that feature. So in lockdown, um, I don't know what you do with your crisps. Um, I certainly keep mine in the microwave because I don't want anybody to touch them. And I'm just going to go in here. I just notice a little thing that I need to change and sample. There we go. So um, yeah, just a photo match microwave. These are the reverse faces on the model. Um, it got rather hot when I was modeling this. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish that off there. There we go. And this one as well. So we'll right click reverse. Okay, so um, all that we'll be doing um, tomorrow is to do the quick artwork, drop the furniture in here, similarly downstairs, um, add a bit of color, um, using a couple of the extensions again for skirtings and architraves. Um, and then just prepare it so that it's ready to go in to, you know, another package like layout or CAD. Um, let me just go to view, hidden geometry, view, hidden objects. So this hidden objects here is shown that the upper uh, roof has been hidden. Um, so I'm going to go to upper level unit. Let me just see where this is. This has been done by a uh, right click. I'm going to unhide it and bring it back. Okay, so we're nearly getting there. Okay, folks, so I'm um, just going to come back online now. Um, if anybody's got any questions, um, I got carried away with all these uh, powerful add-ons. I think they're fantastic. Let me just see if I can go down. Two time saver steps, eye opener. 
one skill chip user, your insight and work flow are great. Some very helpful tips and rationale for your workflow. Thank you. No problem, George. A real time saver for steps. Yes. I like watching a wizard at work, James. Where's the wizard? Um, Alcazar, love the bifolding doors. The bifolding doors are amazing, so honestly. And I'm just so happy that I've been able to show them for the first time. I have to have an uneven number. Uh, you can do, you can do uneven numbers. Um, if I select that there, right click, go to dynamic components, dynamic component options. Um, I was putting four and four in, but I can do four and two. There you go. Four and two. With a bit of color. We'll be adding more color onto the model tomorrow. Um, some other people got ideas for matching, which I'll read through. Better miss that, blah, 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 blah. I have also been a beta tester for Atlas, Google, and Tremble and work with Brad in Colorado. Hello, Dana, that's really good to know. Um, I know that you called me yesterday or you emailed me yesterday. I've just been chock out with um, email responses. I will get back to you. Pleasure that you were on here. And uh, one thing I would say is, SketchUp's evolving as you can see it. I'm, I used to work uh, with other software, working with parametrics. Um, I still believe it's good though that the user can go in and manually edit the geometry regardless of the complexity. So I can understand that that's where the dynamics work and then you can you know, go in and edit them, which for our users is really good. Really enjoying the sessions. Yep, loads of feedback. Can you go over the interact tool again? Yeah, well, basically the interact tool is on the dynamic components toolbar, you have the interact tool. So it's literally a case of if there's anything on the model that interacts, you'll see a little sparkle at the end of the finger. Click to open or close the sashes. So because you're interacting with the model, um, it makes the change. Similarly with the microwave, um, you can click on models to change color, the, you know, click on the doors, drawers, that kind of thing. It's a very cool tool, very good for space planning to show a client, you know, this is the space you're going to go left with to prove a point. Can you show how you develop the topography in the model? That will be in another course, but yes, good question. Because we need to know about terrain modeling, externals as well. Thank you for saying that placing and moving objects in the old system is difficult. I thought it was just me, yes. No, it was tricky because, you know, the minute you have a model here and you're, you know, moving this over, oops, there you go, it's tricky. Um, if I click this here, you know, you didn't have those, um, grips and a lot of people when I was training before a lot of people would go over to the corner and actually look to click on that corner it didn't mean anything but now it does and then the fact is you can actually toggle those uh, placement grips is just good it's also the same on the rotate tool as well folks um 2020.1 has now the rotate where you can actually toggle the grips. So I could actually, not that you would do this, but I want to rotate this on the back or the front or the center. And you can do that now as well. It's really good. Thank you for saying, okay. Will you add urban design? Yes, sorry, Leslie, I forgot to add in, and I know that you're an urban designer, so I will add that into the call. I'm really sorry about that. When will recordings be available? Um, I'm waiting till I get through the webinar and then next week um, I'll be sending them all out. 
how much do plugins use they cost? Um, there is tomorrow a coupon um, offering for everybody who's been on the webinar. I'll announce that tomorrow. So it'll be cheaper than what it is at the moment. Thank you, James. Excellent super options available. Where can I see the recording session? Okay, I've answered that. Don't tell my boss I could be this quick. Yes. Thank you, James. Send us a link to the recording. Yes, uh, the recording links will go out. Definitely will. Marie, like to go over it all and play and schedule at the same time, plus interruption. I'm sorry, yeah, you'll get that, you'll get that, Marie, no problem. Good to hear from you. Okay, folks, um, anybody else got any questions at all to type in the chat? If not, we'll see you tomorrow. Do you see that parrot fly by? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to think, anybody got an idea for a virtual background video for tomorrow? animals or anything, who knows, I'll see what I can find. Um, but thanks everybody, um, I will catch up with you tomorrow. Thanks for your support.